Hello everyone, Marius here. In today's video I will be playing Horizon Zero Dawn in VR with another wonderful mod made by Luke Ross. This mod has been out for a while but um, as I've done with most other Luke Ross mods I will be doing a little optimization video for Horizon Zero Dawn where I talk a little bit in depth about some different settings and what I found to work best on my setup. I will be going through where you can find the mod, how to install it, some uh, tips and tricks for optimizing the game. Let's do this! Mr. Lee. Okay folks, here we go. Uh, to run Horizon Zero Dawn mod, you will of course need a copy of the game. Personally, I bought the game on Steam, so here it is, you see, um, you'll need to know where to find your local files. Uh, for me, I head to the little cog, the wheel, and I go to uh, browse local files. And there we go, there we have our main executable. And here I want to extract my mod files. So to do this, I'll need to find uh, where I saved my mod and uh, extract it to here. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. Uh, let's see, there we go. So, here we are. All right, um, so to get the re VR mod, which I'm using to play Horizon Zero Dawn in VR, you need to head to Luke Ross's Patreon and you need to pay to get access to this and it costs like 9 or 10 US dollars. Um, then you'll get access to his Red Dead Redemption 2 mod, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, Mafia 1, 2 and 3 Definitive Edition, yeah and Cyberpunk 2077, I think that's it. So I'm gonna head to my Horizon Zero Dawn folder, grab all of these, real repo, open the VR API and real bat, real config bat, and drag them over, and that's it. I'm not going to do it now because I've already done it. After you've done that, you have to double click real config, let it run, then the VR mod is installed. So let's play the game, and I'm going to show you. I'm using virtual desktop at the moment because. Um, I want to capture with the best frame rate I can so I'm able to demonstrate my settings the best way possible. All right, so let's play the game. So let's bring up our mod menu. We can press down both triggers on our um, controller or the pause button on your keyboard, I think, to get, get access to this. In here, uh, I have gone to advanced and change the buffering from double to single because I get a little less latency. I've chosen my VR headset as an Oculus headset or device or what you call it. Another thing is I went down to GPU throttling. This is by default on minus one which means it is off and I've turned this to one which means it's on its max. And what this does it is it gives the it makes my computer prioritize this game over other apps and there are a bunch of cool settings here you can choose to hide your player model if it's annoying personally i like seeing my character that's how i prefer to play uh, it seems like i have to play with my mouse and keyboard because something weird and funky is going on with my controller here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Not a big deal though, because I'm just going to show you some settings right now. Um, so if we head to our display settings, I've chosen 1920 by 1920. This is by default on 2430 by 2430. Uh, I've chosen the game's upscaling method, which is called simple. The reason I chose this one is that I can, with this, have adaptive performance turned on. 
So I'm aiming for 70 frames per second on adaptive performance. That means it will uh, turn down the resolution to be able to achieve 70 frames per second. And I've capped my frame rate at 70 frames per second to make it as smooth as possible. Um, and this works really well. Um, I have tried with FSR that does uh, it does work but there's this weird thing with Horizon Zero Dawn where it seems like the game loads during cutscenes so when I do not use this technique with uh, adaptive performance then even with FSR on the game all, all of a sudden just tanks in performance and it's really uncomfortable when I play like this, the only thing that happens is that the, all of a sudden the, the image is really, really grainy and blurry. But when you're back in the actual game, everything looks fine. Uh, so um, I would highly recommend that. Um, textures I put on high and everything else is on low or medium or off. Uh, the anti-aliasing is ca camera based and that um, it makes it like the game chooses the best anti-aliasing method for me based on whatever setting you're in, right? So that's it folks, that's how simple the whole thing is. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna head into the game. I think we're in uh, the open world. I've never played this game with mouse and keyboard. <laughs> There's something really odd going on with my PC. Can't really tell what it is. I think it's the fact that I'm playing with virtual desktop at the moment. Uh, only thing I would say about this game which is a negative thing and this is really negative for me is the extremely aggressive lens flare effect um, this is originally an um, Xbox no not Xbox a PS4 game yeah it's originally a PS4 PS4 game and some things did not <laughs> let themselves be patched as well as others. Like I'm getting a super smooth experience here, but the lens flare from the sun is just insane. It's, it does not look good at all. <laughs> but it, does, it doesn't break the game, because it, it at least tries to look pretty, you know? And there's nothing wrong with the resolution as I'm seeing it now, while in the actual game. Uh, I only notice the resolution getting tanked during uh, cutscenes uh, and an, an occasional bug like this <laughs> weird thing going on with the grass over there uh, there are some bugs every now and then but like rarely does anything game breaking ever happen So like, generally speaking, I do get a really solid experience with this upscaling method, which is their own built-in upscaling method. It doesn't make the image look any weird in any way. But I'm going to show you, just for the sake of demonstration, uh, what happens when you choose FSR, because it works just fine while you're in the actual game. One thing I forgot to tell you is that I put the upscale quality at quality instead of ultra quality. The reason is that I wanted to be able to adjust it, adjust the resolution quite aggressively, uh, turn it down uh, like big time in those places where it has to load so that I don't get that like uh, all of a sudden super choppy slideshow experience because it does load during the cutscenes or at least it seems like that I, I don't know maybe there's something else going on feel free to tell me down in the comments if you can think of why so we're, we're gonna turn on FSR 
uh, and like with Cyberpunk, 2160 by 2160 with FSR and Ultra, this should, in theory, run really well on my setup. So we'll try, and as you see, it looks, it looks nice. Like FSR looks pretty in this game. It's a good implementation of S FSR. The TAA is not super blurry like it is in some other titles. Uh, the FSR here actually looks pretty nice. Uh, I would kind of recommend, if you can, to play this with 2430 by 2430 while playing with FSR on. Because uh, I was, I actually did a benchmark with this and I found that I was able to keep 68 frames per second when aiming for 70. So that is really close. That is super close to my um, target. And this feels totally smooth. Like there's nothing like off with the um, frame rate at this At this point in time, really cool that it turns off like um, what's it called? It turns off the um, it it changes to third person in those places where the camera has a, a hard time um, catching up. Really neat little effect. Works super well for this mod. And like now, the game looks beautiful. <laughs> so this is 2430 by 2430 with FSR on, on Ultra. Uh, FSR on quality looks pretty as well, actually. Um, but like, as I said, if you can play it like this, I see no reason why you shouldn't, because this is by far much better <laughs> actually than um, the way I played it previously. And you could of course just ch change in change between those two settings, like have FSR on Ultra when you're like in the open world exploring and everything. And if you know there's a, an, uh, uh, if you know there's like a cutscene coming up, then you can just head into your settings and change it. Personally though, I uh, kind of prefer playing it like this so I don't have to change resolution all the time. Like it looks a little bit more blurry or grainy or whatever but to me it's worth it. Just having that smooth experience you know. I could probably play this with 2160 by 2160 with the resolution scaling on. I am pretty sure my PC can handle it, but um, it won't feel as smooth, of course, right? And it does not. So, uh, but sure, you you can, right? I generally prefer thinking that if there's anything very close to the display of my headset, like this has nineteen twenty by eighteen hundred something. I can't remember the exact resolution of the screen in the Quest Two. But I try to match the screen resolution as best I could always. Because as long as the resolution is not lower than the resolution of my screen, then um, so much for being you, careful. You don't have like pixels getting dragged out on your headset or trying to fit the display in a sense, right? Because that's the worst thing I know. 
like as long as you can play with the resolution matching that of your headset then I'm good um, yeah so this is the way I prefer to play it I've been playing this for a while now so I do recommend you give a shot um, as mentioned the reason is that in cutscenes it needs to have some room to uh, like turn down the resolution but the FSR implementation is actually quite awesome like now we're on okay we'll change that to quality and FSR is really impressive like I don't know if you saw how much VRAM that was supposed to cost but it is not like overwhelming at all <laughs> like, like FSR does not cost as much as you would have thought like you would have personally I would think that this should be much more much more costly than running it with its own like upscaling method but FSR is an amazing uh, little tool folks and the game looks beautiful with FSR on so if I could like I'm doing with cyberpunk I would of course play it like this Um, and maybe you have a more powerful setup than I do, so you're probably fully able to play it like that. Personally though, this works some places, while in other places it does not really work for me. So, um, yeah. Most definitely a game you should be checking out. Like, yeah, I did not have high hopes for this, because I've kind of heard some mixed reviews um, about Horizon Zero Dawn in VR oh yeah okay there the game crashes on me because I've changed the resolution too many times uh, it's not the first time <laughs> so we're gonna leave it at that folks um, when the game crashes then you've done it too much all right great game you should really check it out awesome stuff folks okay there you have it folks horizon zero dawn in vr with another wonderful luke ross mod i really love these mods and uh, yeah can't wait until there's more of them uh, i hope you found today's video useful and if so please click the thumbs up button Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe for future similar content about flat screen to VR gaming. Alright, catch you on the next one.